second, Robert. A mere reflection of your true self, Sir Tom. Yes, sir. May we help you? I'm Thomas Earl. I believe you have a reservation here cabled from New Orleans. Sir Thomas, of course. We were notified that you were coming. We have our premier suite reserved along with attendants. I won't require attendance. <coughs> dusty. I'll need my driver quartered near me. <coughs> I'll have your things put in your room. The man will show you up. I hope you enjoy your stay at the Virginia House. If I don't, you'll be the first to hear about it. Lovely! Exquisite! It will be fine. Thank you. You will receive your gratuities at the end of our stay. Sir Thomas, welcome to Virginia City. The Bank of New Orleans has cabled me of your journey. My wife and I would enjoy your company at dinner the first night you arrive. Daniel Kenton, President, Bank of Virginia City. Sir Thomas, you honor us by coming. I'm Daniel Kenton, president of the Bank of Virginia City. How do you do? We are delighted to have you as our guest. Won't you come inside and meet my family? My wife, Dory, and my daughter, Regina. May I present Sir Thomas Earl? Sean. You are lovely, my dear. Why, thank you. I took the liberty of inviting some of the leading citizens of Virginia City over to meet you. For me? Come inside and let me introduce you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sir Thomas Earl. Sir Thomas, the good folks of Virginia City. May I present our sheriff, William Baines. He also happens to own half the town, at least the half that Alex Sheridan and I don't own. <laughs> He's going to run for governor in two years. Ah, governor. Nice to meet you. I never did get too interested in politics. I'm a poet. Now, when I was in school in London, I did once write a rather nice political verse. Let me see now. Uh, how did it go? The king of France has lost his pants <laughs> and half the fleet of John Lafitte. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in London, they talk politics incessantly. They're also worried about this Ruffy labor movement. The Queen seems quite in an uproar about it all personally. I find the whole thing terribly boring. <laughs> well, we use coolie labor out here. One of them Chinese tries to set up a union, you know. We set them up between two horses and then aim at a tree. Of course, then this ain't London. No, it isn't. But you have precisely the right method. I must remember to write Vicky and suggest it to her. Maybe in verse. <laughs> Vicky. Queen Victoria. <laughs> Sir Thomas, may I present Alex Sheridan? He and I own the Silver Queen mine, which was really the first major strike out here. Ever since Dan here got you wired that you were coming, I've been looking forward to meeting you, Sir Thomas. No, thank you. You know, I'd hope to be able to talk to you about business. Uh, this country's growing, and a lot of opportunities well, Alex, here. Alex, this is pure social. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I'm quite the silly one of business. It confuses me terribly. I am, however, interested in uh, perhaps buying a silver mine. I do so love silver. I have the most charming little collection of polished silver animals, about so high, made in France. Sir so, Thomas, uh, this is Alex's son, True Sheridan. Uh, he went to school in London two years back. It was uh, Brighton, actually. Oh, yes, Brighton used to be excellent. It has become quite ordinary of late. They're taking the sons of mere merchants. Do you fence at all, Sir Thomas? 
I've kept in trim. Perhaps you and I could uh, work up a little match. Well, of course, I have been schooled in it, but uh, I find that when one engages in sword play, one tends to get hurt. <laughs> and I simply abhor bloodshed, especially my own. <laughs> you aren't saying that you are a coward, are you, Sir Thomas? No. I uh, prefer to think of myself as a man who has a job to do and uh, who will not be provoked into needless conflicts until it is done. And what job are you doing? I'm trying to pluck every flower in the garden of, shall we say, life. <laughs> True is court and Regina, so you... You want to watch, that's one flower you don't pluck. Oh, oh quite, quite. He might run me through with a sword. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Sir Thomas. Good night. Thank you. Now, what do you think? He might be just the answer for Alex and me. Yeah, well, I don't like it. I got a feeling. I got a wire from the Bank of New Orleans. He's got unlimited credit up to maybe $30 million. I don't have to tell you, Alex and me spread out pretty thin. Now, this Sir Thomas is interested in mines. Why don't we sell him the old Silver Queen? She's almost mined out. I suppose you told Bodine you were going to sell the Silver Queen, didn't you? We told the triad. Oh, you haven't talked to Bodine. Nobody talks to Zach no more. Nobody even knows where he is. That's the way he set it up. Nobody. When is that money coming in, Dan? I don't know. Soon? Well, we'll just have to take Sir Thomas out to the Queen tomorrow in the panhandle. If he's as crazy as he sounds, we'll sell him in a hurry. <laughs> production charts in the mine. As you can see, uh, she produces between 15 or 20 tons of ore a month. What are these little percentages? They seem to be diminishing. Oh, what that is, uh, is the percentage of pitch or rock to ore. But with a mine that's rich, that'll sometimes go down for a month or so, then climb back up as the uh, mother load narrows and widens. I see. Wait, oh. Now, wait till you see this mine. I know you're gonna want to buy it. If you say I should, Mr. Sheridan, then I will. After all, one must trust one's business advisors, mustn't one?